three, two, one again. You guys can all shoot me. How many of you might have been in a presentation like this where you saw Mariah, Carrie, and myself talk about being outside the envelope, literally? And it would have been about two years ago. Awesome. Deborah. Woo. All right. Everybody else, pretend you never saw this. And, and actually, what's, what's really positive is, and Carrie and I will get into this with, with Mariah, how to push outside the envelope redux is because two years ago, we were up and we presented the new technologies that basically allow trailing edge die cut shapes to be part of an outbound envelope. And it used to be if you did any kind of a shape mail, you know, like the frog or the turtle, you paid customized market mail rates, which added like another ounce of postage and were ridiculous. So now if you keep your shape within five eighths of an inch off the trailing edge, we'll get there, you can mail at automation rates. And what we're also going to cover is uh, the post office finally brought back their 2% postage discounts for certain promotions. In the old days, it might have been a rebate. Now it's a discount. So if you do everything right, you can get a 2% discount on uh, your postage. And Carrie will talk a little bit about that as we get there, because that could be almost five, six dollars, maybe even ten dollars a thousand, depending upon where your postage rate is. And these shapes qualify in that tactile promotion. And the third thing that's happened is the post office now has about 15 million households that have subscribed to informed delivery. So if you use a shape as part of your outbound messaging, you now can maybe show up and inform delivery, the household, in a way that stands out uh, so it doesn't just look like a card. And we'll get to that. There's 15.746 registered users. I was so close to 15 million. <laughs> and, and, and we're lucky in that uh, Mariah is on the panel too, and we'll introduce ourselves. But she just won as part of a contest, and we'll get to that, with the National Postal Forum for an informed delivery contest. So you're sitting with one of the finalists. And again, that's why I say come to Indianapolis, vote her in as the ultimate winner. And uh, she'll be happy, we'll be happy. And not to take away from the next session, but there is a nice little slide that will show you, and again, all this is available from NEMA, on how your brain works and why physical matters, whether you're going <coughs> digital to physical, physical to digital, digital to digital, or physical, physical. Getting something physical can really make your brain work when you're thinking about shapes, when you're thinking about faces, when you're thinking about scenery. And uh, so let's meet the panel. Well, can we ask them how many of the people here actually have informed delivery with the post office? Oh, you guys are good. OK, so ah, we'll get oh, there. Really? we're going to get there. All so right. you, you're going to want this. You're going to want this. So just first thing you do when you leave here. Yeah. You're yeah. going to do it on your phone while we're still talking. Do it on your phone before you go. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah, I would do, too. But We'd don't do it, because then you won't you'll miss like us like talking. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, don't do it right now. No. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm one of those also that it doesn't want to give my, my age away. Uh, but 40 years primarily in the, in the mailing industry, working for envelope converting, printing, commercial printing. And I'm now with a company called W&D, which stands for Winkler and Dunabier. And we're the technology behind a lot of equipment from envelope converting, overprinting, inserting, and wrapping. And we're uh, headquartered in uh, Lenexa, Kansas for North America, but I live in Boston, so I'm local. Uh, Mariah, you're up. Oh, all right. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm Mariah Hunt. Um, I have my own agency, Hunt Direct. Um, I don't have any employees, actually. It's just me. Three plus. Um, I have three Contractors. plus. Contractors. Well, no, I have lots. So I have lots of contractors. My, my agency is virtual. I mean, like, like Alex said, um, I have a vast network of people through LinkedIn and, and being in the agency business for over 35 years. Um, so depending on what project we need, I pull those people in who are appropriate for that project. Packaging, we use packaging designers. Mail, we use mail designers. Online, we use online designers. So there's only one employee, there's me, but there's a vast number of people that I pull in. Um, <coughs> I, I do full service, and I was talking to Carrie. Um, my, my passion is mail. I spent a lot of time print production, um, dealing with the post office at agencies like Prevision Marketing. Um, uh, I can't remember the other one. Barrington and Isham. Um, I, had, I worked at Digitas for 15 years. Uh, I had a short stint at Grand Circle Travel. Um, you know, uh, all those places where mail was big. It was back in the 80s and the early 90s. People were doing mail. Um, reinvented myself to become a project manager and get a lot of online, became president of NEDMA and decided that new technology space is where I really wanted to be, which actually leads into how I got involved in this. Um, really wouldn't have done it without Brooke pushing me, so thank you very much, Brooke. Um, so now I do a lot of mail. I do a lot of creative design. 
um, online and offline. And um, I do a lot of promotional packaging, so promotional items. Um, I'm a member of ASI, so I'm a distributor for all sorts of things, tchotchke with your logo on it. Uh, Rhode Island novelty. Don't yep. go to Rhode Island. Right right. <laughs> you don't need to go to Rhode Island. You can come to me. <laughs> And Carrie, you're up. Yep, I am Carrie Hannafy. I'm the now I am. I was in quality for 25 years, and now I am um, recently to uh, director of account services at Data Mail, in Newington, Connecticut. We are a full service direct marketing, direct mail type thing. We have prints. We we do. Um, we have we make envelopes. We have creative. We have all sorts of things. Soup to nuts. We mail about 1.6 um, billion pieces of mail a year, um, and. Not a lot of people have gone here yet, um, so um, I've been pushing it since day one, several years, but we now have the equipment to uh, produce these types of envelopes, and I sit on uh, MTAC boards and all sorts of stuff to, uh, committees, sorry, um, to get these kinds of regulations pushed through. And Carrie is on the Nedema board, too, by the way. Brooke and Carrie are, are both on the board of directors for Nedema. And we're one we're thing drinking Carrie, the Kool-Aid. Yeah, really. One thing Carrie won't tell you is data mail is actually the best kept secret in yeah. Boston. Like, you know, it's one of those places where uh, in Connecticut and New York, and I think farther south, they know great things about data mail. But in this area, um, if somebody ever asks me high volume mailers, this is where I go. Like, I point them this direction. <laughs> so our, our format's going to be interactive. There are a number of slides with some basic background, but at at any one point in time, Mariah or Carrie might hop in with me or beside me or over me, and feel free to raise a question if I've lost anybody. Um, so here's where the technology comes in. And what's revolutionary is probably about five years ago, uh, a process called complete cut started to emerge. And this lets you take a, a flexible aluminum die. I'm leaving it in here so you don't have to cut yourself. It's not that sharp. But this flex die takes an eight and a half by 11 or you know, whatever size the blank is, is probably 11 by nine and a quarter, and trims the whole thing. Puts, puts the window in, puts the shape in, and keep one of the envelopes while you look at the die. There's no rush. Um, and it used to be, for envelope converting, you needed very expensive high die tooling. And you'd go through about three inches of paper, and someone would charge you $2,000 for a new die, and uh, your, your mind would spin. Now, with, with data mail, for example, this is a relatively disposable die, even though it'll get up to five million impressions. Um, and you can put windows and perfs and all kinds of things. So you can see the square, regular guillotine cut rectangle becoming a fully finished envelope. So that's the technology that helped enable these trailing edge die cut shapes relatively easily. And easy. like what, a thousand, a thousand envelopes a minute? So we have speeds. Literally, you'll like find I'm not some kidding. people I'm not at, kidding. at 400 a minute, and our fastest machine goes at 1600 a minute. And uh, yeah, carries right on top of the most advanced WD equipment. So whether you're talking 10 million, 1 million, or 500,000. Right, and don't forget, I mean, if you guys have never seen, I mean, how many of you understand how envelopes were converted way back when? Like print, oh, okay, so it's a complicated, it was a complicated process. Right. Um, you have paper, you have printing, you have converting that's kind of gone now. So if, if you want to understand, like these things come off looking like this, which is huge, huge. Um, so if you want, you should go to the W&D site and watch the video because they have a video on we how, have this, lots of videos. Yeah, how this um, machine runs. So I, I would- If you want to Google a video, uh, anything that says like 410 easy envelope yeah. is a great start. Because people in mail, again, if you're not staying with the new technology, wouldn't know that this is not a print and convert envelope anymore. Like way back yeah. when, it would take a long time, it would be very expensive, and now it's- Time to mailbox is everything, it's right? Just not. We know that. <laughs> it's just not. All right, so that's, no problem. W and D is, stands for Winkler and Dunabeer, but if you just do, I understand, if you just do W plus D, envelopes or something like that, uh, it'll, it'll come right up. So. The post office in the beginning was really restrictive on what shapes would work. So there are eight shapes that are approved now that are no-brainers. And then we'll tell you how you can create your own shape by working with Mariah and, and Carrie, because they've loosened the rules. Um, now, what's really important is any of these shapes that you see up here, while they're important, the copy can, can change. So that one second from the bottom with Anro, and this is a, a good question for Alex. She's not allowed to do this because she will ace it. But that shows a, snow, a snowman cap, right? It's that they have a snowman. But what else could it be? Yeah. 
that. What yeah, you can change the copy. What other so image? So if you had that as a blank slate shape, what would you put there? Because those are the shapes approved by the post office. So just so you know, so this is my envelope, which was approved. And so these two Copycats, were, copycats. copycats. <laughs> Imitation is the form of flattery, right? So there you go. So, so think about this for a second. There's, there's a kind of like a snowman. Are you locked into a snowman cap? You're not. So, okay, Alex, give us, give us a possible. I think his pom pom could be the moon, and yes. the other thing could be like a mountain range. That the moon is coming up. Thank you. So, for me, I get stuck on the tail of a bunny rabbit. So, I'm thinking of a zoo, and I'm thinking of a bunny rabbit. Um, this victory shape, which was actually used by the post office for irresistible mail, it's a trophy. But we've seen people start to come up with ideas of like a bottle, you know, or a rocky cliff. Or, or things of that nature. All right, the phone note. If you were talking to AT&T or Verizon or somebody, what would you do with a phone note? The phone note. The uh, sticky notes, the yellow two. sticky notes. <laughs> could be a phone, it could be a large screen TV. It, 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 so the, the point of this is, what's really fun, uh, and some people don't go all the way, but when you bleed the color off the edge, which you can do now, and make it look like, like something fun's happening, you, you get a little better lift than when you stop short, like the upper one on the right, I think, you know, you see the white. But it's also going to help you with informed delivery, which we'll show you. So bleed off the edge, carries machines, everyone's machines can handle it. With that sun solutions that you see there, I've seen people do golf balls, I've seen people do coffee mugs, I've seen people do, um, what else have we done? Metals. Metals. Metals, yeah. But, so your imagination can roam on these eight shapes. And uh, they're tens and six by nine and a half booklets, very popular. And then you're going to see that you can create your own shape, uh, which I'll show in a sec. So here's your own shape. What Carrie, myself, others working with USPS with a group called MTAC, it's like Mail Technical Advisory Committee, they came up and said, listen, we're going to allow all the shapes now that are 5 eighths of an inch trailing edge as long as you have a little bit in zone B and a little bit in zone C, which is kind of like in the middle. It's OK to still have some up the top, like, like D, which is the um, ANRO, or, or A. But they really want you to have some in B and C. Now, the reason we kind of like C a lot is this little note. And um, by the way, we have, can I get someone past these out? Yep. Do you mind, Paul? Okay. So here's, here's the template. And it's on the USPS. Thanks, Paul. I'll use you. It says, recommend that die cut shapes should extend into zone C, which is kind of in the middle. Because if you're in zone C, there will be visibility of the die cut and the informed delivery for recipients. If you're above or below, it won't. And that's because zone C tells the, uh, the mail automation processing, this is the end of the envelope. So take your picture. And, and for those who haven't seen informed delivery, you'll see it on the next page. Now, this, this can be very confusing for people who don't have, ne have not been part of it. That's so why you call Carrie. <laughs> Or more. Exactly as I say, even if you're not having me do the mail, if you, and you want help, feel free to reach out and I'll give you cards because it, it does, if you just look at this for the first time, you're like, what? What are they talking about? Yeah, and if you've never dealt with the post office before, please don't. <laughs> just please don't. Legacy. A is a legacy shape. It probably wouldn't get approved now, but it was one of the earlier ones, and the fact is it processes. In reality, yes. And, and the key to um, going forward, if you like one of those shapes, Carrie knows this, Mariah knows this, but whoever you're working with, the case number and case letter is, is written underneath the, uh, the color. So it might be like case 83259. That refers to the USPS approval letter that gets turned in at the time you do the mailing. Okay, so yes, most of them are C. Yeah, the 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 one for irresistible mail kind of starts on A and drops down to D, and there's a little. It's another legacy shape. The victory one. The victory. And the USPS don't, did it. Yeah, and the USPS did it. Yeah. Don't be don't be afraid though. So I mean, the worst they can do is say no, right? So I mean, there's a process, an approval process, which I'm sure Brooke will get to. But I mean, we're pushing the envelope literally. So yeah. you know. Yeah, Don't be afraid. And, and, and so the nice thing is uh, people like Carrie, Mariah, whoever you're used to working with can now get an approval if you're in those zones the right way in, in less than five days. It used to take six to eight weeks. Yeah. I mean, almost 10 weeks. So they've accelerated it. 
And here's the bonus, uh, or one of the bonuses that comes. So that the, already it can go at automation rates. Informed delivery, you know you have informed delivery if you see something that says, hey, coming to your mailbox soon. And then you have a list of what's coming tomorrow, usually in grayscale. So there's an example of a number 10 special window. It signals after me for some reason. This is so awful. Close, close to 48 million paperless transactions past year. Let's do more. Yeah, no. <laughs> Right? I want, I want my data protected and hard. Wait, can I ask one question? Do you guys understand what automation rate is? OK. Everybody? No? OK, so when you mail, so I, sorry, I, no, I tend, to be, I tend to be very good. basic. This is my, my problem, usually. But so when you mail something out, so mine, you notice, doesn't have an indicia on it. Um, and actually, I don't think any of them do. Um, maybe just, one. Oh, sorry. Right, but so. It depends on the quantity of pieces that you mail on what you put here. Um, you could do an indicia on here, and then that, that indicia belongs to that person. But um, automation rates means that you have done <coughs> enough work from the post office for them to be able to give you kind of a discount. So you're not paying for straight first class rate, um, or if you have 500 pieces or more, you're not paying for a standard rate. Um, I think it's 300 now. Maybe 300? 200. We, we, we lowered it. Thank God. 200. Um, so what you want to do is if you want to do a mailing like this, like postage is the most expensive part of your mailing, believe it or not. You know, so what you want to do is check and see how many you have and always want to get an automated rate from the post office. These before wouldn't allow you to do that. You'd have to pay extra. So now getting them approved makes this say, we can process this as n normal mail. Nothing's going to happen to it. It won't get ripped to shreds. So we're going to give you automation. So right? before, before this was approved, you'd be paying 75 cents for a piece like that, Net for going first class with a shape. Now with automation, you can go standard. You can, you can pay as low as 22 cents or even lower than that if you're going carrier route. So that's the difference. So it's when huge. we're talking money, 50 it's cents huge. a piece is a huge amount of money when you're mailing 10,000, 100,000, a million pieces. And, and for those of us who grew up in the sad envelope world or something, when you hear 22 cents, you're like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm selling envelopes for a penny or two pennies each. So 22 cents is $220 a thousand. Right. Envelopes, you know, sometimes people are happy to get $60 a thousand, so, or less. So um, <laughs> any event, postage, as Mariah says, wags the dog a lot. And now you can do something creative at no penalty is, is the basic gist. You had another question, Chris? Yeah, I just have one question. On that automation rate, is that based on that particular mailing, or is that across all the mailings that your company might do? It's across that particular mailing. It, it, it's kind of, that's, a, that's an open-ended question. It's uh, automation against this particular the piece. The list. Right. Yes, that project with this okay. list. That's what I wanted yep. to Yeah. But uh, you know, it's always, in many ways, worth testing against your control. And um, even if the postage costs you a little more because you're going to do a smaller quantity than what you're used to, if you ignore that postage for the moment because you would get the lower rate, um, test against the control, you see what, see what you get. OK, so it's not 15 million households. Carrie, it's 15, now 15.7? 15.7. Almost 16. We're going to round it up. A little less right. households because two people, like a husband and a wife, both signed up for it. Or a kid and the, the mother. So if you, if you go to uspsinformeddelivery.gov, uh, you can probably find out how you can sign up and get this. And what it does is it shows what's coming in the next day in your mail. So you could be traveling, and it's like, great. Um, you know, there's a catalog coming. Or how come my wife never shows me that? You know, or my husband never shows me that? Actually, so, my, mine tells me what I'm getting that day. Yeah. I get what, it in the morning, and I have I get what, mine at 719 yeah, right, You know what I mean. Yep. It, 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 if the mail's missing, now you got to yeah, write Yeah, you know where it is. <laughs> OK, so, so here's a, a, a common number 10 envelope for billing. If you have kids, you need this, by the way. <laughs> OK. Absolutely. So here's a problem with people not getting their data right uh, aside. Ms. Brooke <laughs> happens to me all the time. Um, but I'm learning more about Epson. So anyway, uh, this is a large card. So you see how the envelope and the card look really similar? This has the envelope people really anxious because are everyone going to go do more postcards instead of getting their envelope? Mm, no, they won't. Because now, blah, blah, there's the magical uh, trailing edge. So see how this was, this was Cool Breeze. They had a yellow post-it note. I just filled it in for fun. Um, but you see how you have the edge showing? So it sticks out on the image. You can tell there's a trailing shape. Now taking it to the next level, dun, 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 dun. What happens, Mariah, if, if you want to do a campaign? Does it cost a lot? And no, it doesn't cost anything, actually. Um, so in order to get this, so 
Um, Brooke again pushed me to do the award category for informed mail because it's the post office wants to promote it, right? So you have to become a business mailer. You have to go on the portal. Um, I have to tell you, the portal is not exactly user friendly, um, but it works. So you go on the portal. You give them the information. You give them images like this. Um, so, and you tell them, you know, when the start date is, when the finish date is. You have to have a mailer ID to do it. Um, it when, I, when I got used to it, it wasn't so bad. So we did this package, which is the award package. I sent out about 250 of them. That was it. Um, just to see how this was going to work, right? Um, so we took a picture of it. This is what they see. So when you get into informed delivery, because I set up the campaign on the portal, um, and I gave them all the information, including you're, you're going to be able to click through. So you see that little second image down there? Um, right that's, to your website. That's right, key. That's my, that's my little advertisement, like business card advertisement. They click on that, and they get right to my website. This is in color. So I went and did the extra mile. Took me probably half an hour. Um, told them what was happening, gave them all of the information, and now my piece shows up like that in color in his email. So there are letter shops or, or management companies like Data Mail could do that. If you, this, you're like, you don't even want it, the details. Just, just here's the piece and you guys take care of it. We, we can go on the business cu yeah. customer gateway for you. We do all that. We do all that for you so that it's easy. We take, the, you know, we do the scans and the PDFs and the whole thing. And then it's like one big service of you can go in, you can get, get people who are signed up of these 15 million households. Again, it's not widespread, but it's going to be coming. More and more of it's going to be coming. And then you can also get statistics on that through the Postal Service. And then there's firms out there that can help you with those statistics. You can see how many people click through and who click through, which <coughs> IMBs. And you can actually get back-end files to know who opened what. The reporting's unbelievable. <coughs> There you go. Perfect. See how it's in color? It's in color. So right now, it doesn't cost anything for the post office to set you up to do a, a, a campaign. <laughs> and it combines that link of digital. You have to have a link. And you get to choose what image you want people to see. You go right to the top. And uh, there are 15 million households currently that are looking. So this is exciting. So that's one little benefit and of the show. And it ship. is going to be informed um, delivery is going to be one of the promotions as well coming up. Has um, anybody ever tested like informed delivery against just traditional like that's chat segment where you didn't register it? Well, you could with the reporting. You could find you, out. You could. Oh yeah, no. You could. You, yeah, you don't have to register it. Yeah, you don't have to register. They'll, st they'll see your, so the way informed delivery works, you know, the mailer does not have to be registered. What they want, if you want to get it in color and you want the hyperlinks and all that, then you, you register. But just yeah, the, any old I person, yeah. Really yeah. I have never, I haven't seen any statistics on that. If there's, a, if there's a better response rate, if it's registered and there's a click through, it's so in its infancy yeah. that I don't think there's, but we have a lot of clients who are doing it. Um, Again, it's kind of, I'll be honest, it's a little hard sell because if you think about it, 15 million, 13 million households, whatever it is out there, how many of them are actually on your list? But you can actually check that. You can actually pass your file through the USPS, or you can have DataMail do that for you, and see how many of those people that are on your list are registered for informed delivery. So that information is all out there. Again, it's now free through the Postal Service. Your only fee would be if someone's managing it for you. But that, all that data is there, and has you have the ability to get all those reports and find the, the percent that have the informed delivery. But that's a good idea because you could do a test as long as your call to action is the same. Right. You know, you could do a test on informed delivery yeah. about the click-through rate uh, on the ones that didn't get done. As a mailer, you don't have the option of opting out of informed delivery. You can, no. It's all driven by the consumer. Yes. Registering for it. It's as they are scan your mail piece as yes. as a. That's no, what they're 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 taking the image when they're reading the IMB. They're taking the image, and then it's showing up. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now, this sets us up for the third part of the trifecta with shapes now. So everyone's probably aware, and feel free to look at both sides of this envelope as it goes, that the post office didn't do any promotions in 2018 because they didn't have any board of governors. They finally did, and now in 2019, they're back to doing them, and they're very popular. Um, I think right now in the tactile sensory interactive engagement promotion, which is running February to July, which is this one right here, February to July, I think more than 200 million pieces have already been put through or signed up for this promotion. 
So what I'm passing out now on, on the shape is this shape qualifies under the TSI promotion for the 2% discount. Oh, I passed those out already. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, thank I'm you. Sorry. I did that. No, no, I, I, I appreciate it. So here's the shape, and they're starting to do their own you know, agency marketing to, to, to customers saying direct mail madness is here, 2% postage discount. What they're doing is they're making people aware, come to us, come to Cary, come to Mariah, and we can help you get into what normally you think would be embossing samples or things like that, like but this. they're allowing the shape to qualify under the tactile, sensory, and interactive engagement. So it's not a hard process at all. What, what Carrie or Mariah do is they show your mail piece um, to the post office, and then they get a, a code you know, for uh, tactile sensory. It's code SS that goes on the mail statement. And uh, this is only for market mail. And uh, it's 2%, but you have to talk to your vendor about it. You can't get a rebate later. Well, we let's talk, the statement. we'll talk about that. So yeah. when it first started, mm -hmm. the, the post office offered discounts, and you would, you, would, you would have to get approved before you did it, have to have the code on the mailing. But then you'd have to supply them all the paperwork from the mail house for them to decide you were going to get your money back. Deborah's shaking her head because she knows the horror I went through to get this. You know, because all the clients at Digitas, we, we did this a lot. And we said the post office was offering, um, it's a rebate. Um, and it took months, literally months, to get that money back. We did a huge piece for Liberty Mutual. They were so excited. When are we getting our money? When are we? I'm like, stop. <laughs> Just stop. So now, rather than giving a rebate, they automatically take it off the postage. So total 180. So much better customer so experience. So much better. Yeah. So for just in general, though, if, if you're not familiar with all these um, promotions, please get that way, especially if you're, you're doing a lot of mail. The B, and you do BREs, things like that. There's so much. There's free money out there. And Use it. though it's, it sounds like 1% or 2%, that, if you're doing large volumes, it's huge. OK, so here's the math test. If you're mailing at, let's say, 30 cents each, and someone's going to give you a 2% discount, what is that in pennies? Six tenths so it's twenty percent. It'd be what? <laughs> six tenths of a six tenths of a cent. Six tenths of a penny. Six tenths of a penny is still six dollars a thousand. I bet some of you are buying reply envelopes for probably twelve-ish. I mean, I don't know. It's it's significant, and it's found money, as Carrie said. Uh, definitely worth the look. And some of the packages, you guys would be surprised. So the post office, usually, in my experience, has put these up against things that they've already seen. You know, so it, these things existed out in the marketplace before. So again, you know, um, imitation is the best form of flattery. If you're going to use something that they've done, chances are if you've come up with an idea of you know, any kind of tactile, something uh, where you can feel touch, the soft embossed. touch, it might, it, yeah, yeah, absolutely, because it's tactile. But then they've got other different types of promotions too. Um, so really pay attention if you're doing mail to see what promotions they have. Because last year they offered none and people complained, so now they're offering. So this, this sample that we're passing out now, you can't stack your discounts. But this is nice. a shape. <laughs> two and two. And it, and it shows the emboss. And this is a kind of machine that like Kerry has, others have. It has the easy open perf. So oh, that's great. I got an easy open perf. Again, you can't stack the discounts. But notice how, like mine says Raleigh. Maybe yours says Charlie, Peter, something. And on the back, on this one, oh, we didn't do it on the back on this one, personalize it. But inside, you know, you're going to have Raleigh. You know, it's personalized. For me, it's Raleigh. For you, it's Charlie or whatever. But companies like Data Mail can now take your shapes, add embossing. So even if you didn't want to do a shape and you just want a regular envelope with emboss, you could get into that tactile promotion, and you don't have to have window envelopes anymore. They can do the, the read and spray or read and print. So you can have a very personalized experience under tactile sensory. Yeah, and just so you guys know, I mean, my, my, my time as a production manager, adding this kind of thing to it is pennies. Like, you would think it would be outrageously expensive. It is not. You know, so the, the thing is to ask the people that you're doing your envelopes with, you know, say, what would happen if I put uh, an emboss or a deboss or a soft touch or any kind of um, the reticulating varnish, uh, w whatever there is. But I mean, anything that makes it tactile, really, you'd be surprised at how inexpensive it really is. Karen, when you do all that in line, yeah. what do you do? Yeah. It's right in with it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Was that? 
Well, so th it should. It I mean, should. It and you'll should. actually hear more about it in our next session, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People Dan will remember probably things more. Dan will talk to him about it. But, you know, I mean, feeling that the, the reason why they do this is they have the, you know, the scratch and sniff type thing, the feel. I mean, they're fig figuring out that if, if you can interact with it longer, your open rate is going to be higher. Yes. So your, your good question about cards, you know, they have to be like 9,000 thick if they're yep. bigger than a postcard. But Carrie can respond because I believe that also qualifies yeah, for a discount. Yeah. Only can mail. Right. The only it, it, it does work. The only thing is you're talking about a production that's a little bit harder. Okay. It's um, thinking about you just not guillotining. You have to die cut it. Okay. So it gets to be a little more expensive than a continuous type envelope press that's running at a high speed. But yes, it can it can happen. I think it's great for an oversized postcard. Yeah, I, yeah. I, they're great in combo, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. So the other thing to keep an eye on, folks, is there will be a special informed delivery campaign for a two percent postage discount. Mobile shopping, emerging technology is like NFC, augmented reality, other QR. kinds of things, personalized color promo. So lots of cool things that you now have on your master sheet. Look them up. Talk to your vendors. And I think we're now at the point where if you wanted, uh, this is the techie part, so we can skip <laughs> over this. But, but notice, to get your um, approval, it's all stressing it's a discount, not a rebate. So we cover that. There's techie stuff, more techie stuff. With a reminder, it's, again, a discount, not a rebate. You've got to get prior approval. And uh, Wait, but so got to get prior approval. We need to tell them what that means. So prior <laughs> approval means the case number that you're doing on the shape, which you have on that colored, just pick up this, the eight this piece. That. What they want to know is what case number it is in a physical sample. It's as simple and so as if that. You don't ha if you're not following that, yeah. you would have to follow this, and then we would have to send it to the USPS and get them to approve it. But you have yeah, to send physical samples. So, right. I mean, so the, the part of the, the techie part of this and the, the whole part of dealing with the post office, they make it as difficult as possible, right? So right. You're, I mean, you're, you're going to want to do it through your vendor. Whoever yeah, you, your you vendor definitely is, don't want to do it. I've got a cricket for this yeah. exact reason. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows yeah. what the cricket is? You, do, you have a wife that crafts scrapbooks, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this is the. It's a die cut thing. It's a die cut machine. The people use it for like scrapbooking and crafting. So you yeah. Can make it hand you can do hand samples. Hand. Yeah. You don't, have to, you don't have to use scissors. Yeah. No. Well, they have the MDA, so let's not be confused about. Right. So there's there's this stuff which needs a higher level of approval. There's also an online the mail piece design analyst. There used to be some really cool guys that I used to talk to a lot and walk down to South Boston yeah. and get my pieces approved. Um, those people don't exist. Well, John does, but they don't really, they don't really do that anymore. So now what you do, and um, I, I've done it a lot. So we had a mailing for Home Depot. Deborah will shake her hand. Had, we did an oversized postcard, and we had some fan blades coming out. from That was before any of this. Um, we had to send that piece um, to be approved by the post office. Now, that doesn't mean everything works really well, however. But you can do it online now. So. Um, I did a whole bunch of stuff for Havas. We put the we put the pieces into the MDA. They approved it. Sometimes they ask for physical samples and you have to send it, but a lot of times they'll just approve it by then. You need to keep that information just so you know because the oversized postcard that we mailed nationally for Home Depot, everyone was fine with it except for Florida who called and gave me a hard time about how can how did you get those approved? Thousand dollars for right? Right, he did. Yeah, yeah. he wanted to. But the problem, was, the the reality was, we already had it signed off on on the initial uh, entry area for the post office. So he, ba I basically won that argument. <laughs> so this is uh, we're almost at twelve. This is the bonus slide, uh, and maybe it leads into the next session. So I don't want to take it away, but it came out of occasionally the office of inspector general, which is part of the post office, does studies. So as you can imagine, under electronic threat, digital threat, they try to really understand, and, and everyone's kind of come together, that digital and physical together in some combination work. But this is my takeaway slide, and, and forget, here's your hippocampus on uh, drugs, <laughs> looking at targeted ads. Uh, DP just means the sequence was uh, digital, then physical. Uh, PP is physical, then physical. So D and P stands for that. Wipe all that out. This is what's important. When you get something that's physical, 
we tend to process and memorize, and our, our brain works to memorize and be very good at faces in scenes. So the baby face, you know, everyone says, oh, I look at the baby, you know, you look at a face and you look at the beach scene. Not so much on the words, okay? But on the digital world, it really suffers. So something about physical tied in with the shapes, it's the man and the moon uh, coming at you or the widescreen TV, but there is science behind the fact that receiving something physical will help reinforce your digital messaging. And with that, I think we answered pretty much all of these. Do you guys have any questions? It's, it's so yeah. cool, isn't it? It's like it is nerd haven. It, well, for, well, for us, so, you know, the question that I asked Alex earlier, I mean, I have to do a lot of education. I love mail. Like, let's, let's start by this. I love mail. I do. Um, the problem is that mail is expensive. People don't understand how it works. Um, it's a little bit slower. Um, it's getting much faster, but it's a little bit slower than putting something online. Um, I am a big proponent about integrated campaigns, right? So you talk about email, putting out an email saying, coming soon to your mailbox. And then you have the informed delivery. And then you have the follow-up. Those are the kind of campaigns, in my experience, have worked really well. So I'm going to give you guys a quick idea. And I'm not poaching from, overly from a client. But there is someone out there that's relatively large in insurance and sometimes has ideas about balloons and things like that in people's birthdays because they have big datas. But you can also take, Mariah, show the three there all together. Couldn't that be a birthday cake? Couldn't that be something where a if, balloon? if you have enough data to do something to try and, uh, or a balloon or something of that nature, um, the, the person I'm thinking of started with 100,000 a month last July and they're up to 400,000 a month now. There you go. So uh, people, when they test against the control, they, they like it. Because it's not just the cost of the mail, it's really the value per response. So if you're selling Audis and that's the tire of your A5000, hey, maybe all right. Or the steering so. wheel of a Bugatti. Any <laughs> <laughs> event, uh, I think, any other questions? I think that was kind of. I had a question uh, for Mariah. Yeah, just please. Simply about, about this mm -hmm. and informed delivery. There's no indicia on here. There's nope. no film on here. Nope. How did you get the color image? You have to just sign it up as a campaign with my mail ID. But oh, she put a stamp on it. I put a stamp on it. Well, yeah. No, I understand that. But, but how is this associated with the informed delivery? With the informed delivery. Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't, no, you don't see it all. Ad they, they put a film the, on you the don't see the, it, yeah. it all address with the with the film and, yeah. the, and the barcodes. This and had a label IMB. on it. Oh, so the label had yeah. Yeah, or, or the, this, or, we, yeah. This mailed first class, so I mean they're going to spray it at the bottom if I didn't have the zip plus four on the bottom. But if you were to do a large scale campaign, it would be. That was my. Question. It would be in the film. Yeah. Did you do, but did you do that with a small mailing? I can. Uh, on, it, it I didn't. Small. I, but you can, yeah. I didn't personally when I mailed these out because this was just a test to see if we could get to there. <laughs> now that we've gotten to there, I can go farther, but you know. Did you have the reflectance factor or do you have to use the label? Oh, uh, for the red, you wouldn't print black on there. No, you, no. you would want the label. I use, I use the label, yeah. So, so what, what may be being lost is when you do a campaign, you have the freedom to decide what goes into this space. So you mentioned, was it Macy's that you have? So. Often it's in a block. You could actually play around and not have it be a perfect block. And what Mariah did was she wanted people to see a combination of her shape and, uh, and the letter, and this is what's coming. But it could have been anything. It, I it, think what we want to be clear is when it's color, right. it's not the actual image from the postal exactly. equipment. It's an image that you sent to them and said, yeah. use this image. Now, for yours, you used one image. Right. Coming soon to a theater near you is individualized images based on the person. Right. You follow? Right. Yeah. 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 They're getting very technical at the yeah. It's just, it's big data. I mean, the yeah. data's out there. We know by the IMB who's getting what, and I can say that IMB yeah. sticking a puppy, that IMB sticking a pa right. baby pig, right. whatever it is. You can do that from the back end. Of the you can do that to everyone. So you can select your mail. So I did one image on mine, but if it were a campaign, a very targeted campaign, I could have sent them multiple images to put per person. I mean, that's how, that's how technical this gets. Three million, you could do <laughs> it. You could do it. You're that's good. why it's coming. You're through. good. They don't have the right. ability to do it in that big. That so come, come to the National Postal Forum. Make sure you catch up <laughs> you with need to Barry and Ryan uh, after this, because is there another session that starts? Yeah.
Yeah. yeah, we got Dan. So I think we're 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 at our time. Yeah, we're, we're, and you've, if you guys at lunchtime, it, it's technical. So large mailings, please don't come to me. Go to her. Yeah, like, I can't. I don't like throw my brain off. Um, but I'm perfectly willing, you know, to help work out designs for these and then pass it on because we work together like that. I I refer them a lot. <laughs> No, they've been, do they've been doing that for a while. while yeah. The RPN, it used to have a charge to it. They used to charge a penny or two, and now, um, and now um, it's part of the regular postage. It just has to be to the, um, the left of the address block. And it has to be a certain adhesive, right? Yeah, it has to be a regular 3M kind of postage with only one strip of glue and three by three, and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great deal they have with 3M, though. It does, isn't that amazing? Because it's flat. It is because it's flat. It's, you know. And before they used to complain, because I don't know, have you guys ever gotten something in the mail that's shredded? Yes. All right, so I, I tell my great story about how when I first came into business, I was doing work with Monster.com. It was great. Um, it was really amazing. Um, but we were doing a mailing, and they needed to send me a postage check because it was $160,000. First, my bank's like, what are you, what are you, what are you not? They said, you need to send me a check. So they sent me a check, and all of a sudden, I got it in a Ziploc envelope. It had been shredded. So you know, you know what it's like to try to go back to Monster.com, their AP department? I'm like, I had to bring the envelope with me. I'm like, here's the your check came to me, <laughs> but at least they delivered it. All right, and we'll set up some samples at lunch in case you want more collateral. And uh, great, thanks for your All time, right. guys. Thanks.